In this fourth video on factorial design, I'm going to do an example that's from page 623 of the text. This example in the textbook was intended to show a, a 2 to the 3 factorial design uh, and show analysis using the Yates method. So I have the data as it is in the textbook and I need to explain a little bit about what the notation is. What you see here is a column labeled ID and then Y values uh, for two replicates. The column labeled ID needs some explanation. The way this thing works is that the 1 corresponds to all the low level of all of the factors. And the letter A by itself represents the A factor at its high level and the other factors at their low levels. B alone represents B at its high level and the other factors at its low level. And so you can see what the pattern is that any time in this column called ID that a letter appears then the factor is at its high level and anything that doesn't appear is at its low level. So for example this AB ID corresponds to the factor A being at the high level and B being at the high level and the factor C being at the low level. So I'm now going to convert this data to the um, notation that we've been using. So uh, we're going to have Y values in just a minute and what we have here are three factors A, B, and C. And I'm now going to go through the table here and put in the codes plus or minus ones, one that corresponds to each of these experimental conditions. So starting with the ID of one, that corresponds to everything at its low level. So I'm going to enter minus one for A, minus one for B, and minus one for C. A by itself means A is at its high level, so I put in one for A and minus one for B and minus one for C. B by itself means that B is at its high level, so I put in minus 1 for A, 1 for B, and minus 1 for C. <clears throat> the notation AB means both A and B are at their high levels, so they each get a, a plus 1, and then a minus 1 for C. C by itself means that A is low, and B is low, but C is high. AC means that A is high, B is low, and C is high. BC means that A is low, but B is high, and C are high. And then finally, A, B, and C means that everything is high. So this is, uh, is the experimental design. And uh, we now have two replicates, however. So let's put our first replicate of data next to the design that we just coded. And then our second replicate needs to go next to an exact copy of this experimental design. So I'm just going to copy that block and paste it below. And now I'm going to go get the second replicate and paste it. Okay, so um, the table that I have here shows the Y values for two replicates and the corresponding settings. Now to analyze this data using the regression function in Excel, I need to create columns for all of the possible interactions. So the interactions are going to be AB, AC, and BC. Those are the, the three possible two-way interactions. And then finally, we'll have a three-way interaction, A, B, and C. Now, all of these interactions are created, these columns that we need to use the regression function, are created by multiplying the corresponding columns uh, in the 
the table under the factors by themselves. So the AB interaction is going to be the product of the A times B. The AC interaction is going to be the product of the A times the C. The BC interaction is the product of the B times the C. And then finally the ABC interaction is going to be the A times the B times the C. And since I've entered these with formulas, I can now just copy them and then paste them down through the table. Okay, so I am now in a position to estimate the main effects for these factors and all of the interactions using regression. Just by regressing the Y column right here on this, this matrix, this table of plus and minus ones that show the levels of the factors corresponding to those particular observations and then the interactions uh, that are f columns that are formed by multiplying the corresponding um, uh, main factors. So to do this estimation, I'm going to go to data and then data analysis. And I'm going to select regression. And when I click OK, I'll get the regression dialog. The first thing that the dialog wants is the Y column. And I'm going to select this column including the label. So now I'll open the dialog back up. I'm going to go ahead and check the labels box. I'm then going to click in the dialog for the input the, the X's. Now I'm going to select the entire X matrix. I've got labels. I want to output the regression right next to the table here. And I should be good. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK and the regression will compute. Now I can go down into my coefficient table and see what if any of these factors and interactions are significant. And I'm going to do that by looking at the p-values. So for example, for uh, factor A, the main effect has a p-value of just below 10%. So there's some evidence that uh, that factor A matters. Factor B doesn't matter at all. Its p-value is huge, so there's no evidence that it's any different than zero. Factor C is strongly significant. Its p-value is less than 1%, so this gives us evidence that factor C does in fact um, have an effect. The p-values for all of the interactions, the two-way interactions and the three-way interaction, are all very big. So there's no evidence that those interactions um, exist. I now want to show you how to reconstruct the analysis of variance table from the regression output. So in the analysis of variance table we would normally have the sums of squares, the degrees of freedom, the mean square, the F statistic, and then a p-value. Now the sums of squares, and we'd have the factor here, so the factors in this particular case would be A B, C, and um, then we would have the two-way interactions. So we would have A times B, A times C, B times C, and then we would have the three-way interaction, A times B times C. And then we would have the error or residuals, and then we would have the total.
the sum of squares for each of the factors and the interactions is just the square of the coefficient from the regression table times the number of observations. So for example, the sum of squares for factor A is going to be the coefficient squared times the number of observations, which I'll figure out by actually using the count function to count them. So I'm just going to trace out now all of the y observations. And if I go into this formula that I have just created for the sum of squares for factor A and change the count to uh, be an absolute reference instead of a relative ref reference, I should be able to just copy this formula right down through the table. down as far as the ABC. So I now have created the sums of squares for uh, each of these factors and interactions. The sum of squares total is just going to be the same as the sum of squares total for the regression. So I'll just put in an equal sign and go and grab that. And then the sum of squares for the error or the residual is going to be the same as the sum of squares for the error or residual from the regressions ANOVA table. Now the degrees of freedom for each factor is going to be 1 minus the number of levels. And in this particular case, the number of levels for each factor is just 2. So our degrees of freedom for all of the main effects, the A, B, and C, are all 1. The degrees of freedom for the interactions are the product of the degrees of freedom for the factors that are involved. And because we only have one degree of freedom for each of our main effects, the degrees of freedom for all of the interactions is also 1. The degrees of freedom for the total is always n minus 1. So it's going to be the same as the degrees of freedom for the total from the regression table. And then the degrees of freedom for the error will be the same as the degrees of freedom in the regression table. But well, let's just check that. So what I'm going to do here is say that the degrees of freedom for the error ought to be the degrees of freedom for the total minus the sum of the degrees of freedom for all of the factors and interactions. And sure enough, that's 8. As always, the mean square is obtained from the sum of squares by dividing by the number of degrees of freedom. So I can see that the mean square um, for the factors uh, and all the interactions is just exactly the same as the sum of squares because we would be dividing by 1. The only thing that changes here is the mean square for the error. The F statistic is asking the question, is the sum of squares big in comparison to random noise? And random noise is represented here by the mean square error. So our F statistic is going to be the mean square the F statistic here for factor A is going to be the mean square for factor A divided by the mean square error. And if I uh, hit F4 here, I can slide this formula down in just a second because I'll always be dividing by the mean square error that, that represents the noise. So I can see my F statistic for factor A is 3. And I'll just paste it down. So I've now computed my F statistics for all of the main effects and the interactions. My p-values then can be obtained by the F distribution. And the arguments of the F distribution are the value of the F statistic, because what we're computing is the probability of stuff that is as big as the F statistic or bigger under the assumption that there's no relationship between the factors and the data. 
The F statistics takes two degrees of freedom arguments. The first one is the one corresponding to the numerator. The second one is the one corresponding to the denominator. I'm going to press F4 again to change this into an absolute reference and then close. And now I can copy the formula for the p-values all the way down. And what you'll notice is that the p-values that I get from the analysis of variance table are identical to the ones that I got for the, um, the, t, the t statistics for the regression coefficient. So for example, I've highlighted, let me just move it over just a little bit, I've highlighted the coefficient for factor A and its p-value is 0 0.0929 in the regression table and it's 0 0.0929 in the um, analysis of variance table that we've just reconstructed. So um, if you don't like the the format of the regression output because it's not in a standard analysis of variance table then it's easy to recover that table if you know that the sums of squares corresponding to each of the factors in the interactions are just the square of the coefficient from the regression. So you take that coefficient and you square it, okay, times the number of observations. This concludes the um, videos uh, demonstrating the basic idea of, of factorial designs and focusing on, uh, on 2 to the p factorial designs.